Hi guys, your old buddy Rorschach here. How's it going? So they, another comic book review. This time of a very rare comic book. Not your regular comic book like you find in your comic book store today. Because this is a comic book written by a man for men. There's no soy in this one. This is Frank Miller's series, so then. Number two, issue number two. The Fall of the House of Darius and the Rise of Alexander. I don't know why there isn't a legion of uh, young Frank Miller clones trying to do the same thing because this is the kind of comic book that can really um, kick back against the the soy boy, girly, feminized stuff which is destroying the industry today. This is the kind of comic book that uh, the saving industry kind of comic that um, used to be pretty common when I was a kid, but it's very, very rare today. Okay. So let's have a look and see what's going on here. The beginning of the book, then, is the scene after the Battle of Marathon, when the, the Greeks defeated the Persian army, leaving Athens open. That's the cinematic eye. Frank Miller. They're leaving Athens open to attack on the the Persian fleet. So good news, bad news for the Athenians. Good news is that they won the Battle of Marathon. Bad news is that their enemies are closing in on their capital city, which is largely undefended. Okay, so there's the marathon runner that we've heard about before of legend. And there he is. But the good news is bad news for him personally as he drops down and dead. And the Athenians start to realise that um, the Persian fleet is approaching and they're in trouble. Okay, so we have one general falling to Manic Street Preacher style despair, but luckily for them, we've got a, a guy called Themistopheles who rejects despair and instead starts to formulate a plan. His plan then to defeat. King Darius and his son Circes, as they approach on their fleet, is to, is to bluff the Persians, shine up the shields and uh, put up a brave front, but behind these shields are not the best of the Athenians, these are the, the women and the slaves here, uh, bluffing that they are a formidable army, which they most certainly are not. But as well as, well as that bluff, they have this ace as well. This is a special forces kind of a guy. He's going to throw up three arrows and pray that the gods um, allow them to, to hit their target, which they do. One of them goes straight through the, the heart of the invading king. Yeah. And the king is all about destiny and the gods not being on his side and tells his son to retreat. So the bad news for the king is that uh, He's dying. The good news is that uh, his, his final moments are going to be uh, quite sweet indeed. <laughs> so the Athenians are saying, hmm, worry about this Circe's guy. He has the stink of destiny. Right him. The Circe's quarter of the title. But he's retreating because his father, you know, that's his final, his final uh, command of his father. And he's certainly not going to disobey the word of his, of his dying dad. So. Persians retreat and Athens is saved by a bluff and one arrow. Okay, so the retreated Xerxes needs a bit of time for himself and he's done the Jesus thing going into the desert. And, uh, whilst in the desert he's uh, not met by the devil but he's met by, met by a, a similar character in the same oeuvre as the devil or a, uh, a horror movie at least. In the page and show you a hammer horror mummy. <laughs> awesome. I was not expecting that. So, yeah. Jesus met the devil in the desert, and uh, Circes meets uh, someone from a hammer horror movie. And the, the mummy tells him, We're waiting for you. All that you seek can be yours if you but take my hand, says Christopher Lee. <laughs> so, the next issue will be Circes and the best that hammer horror has to offer against those uh, 
those Greeks. And there we go. Next issue available uh, on sale, uh, June 6th. I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> Isn't that not awesome? Is that not a fantastic cover book? Is that not the kind of cover book that can really uh, uh, save the day from the encroaching fleet of oh, Soy Boy Warriors as epitomised by SJW Marvel, people like Dan Slott and Mark Wade, and uh, all the diversity uh, and people they're, they're bringing in who are just pretty much incompetent and not very good at writing comic books. So yeah, this is a top quality comic book, of course it is. It's written by Frank Miller, so thumbs up for me, I recommend that you, that you check it out. It's awesome. So there we go, I'll end the video there. Um, let me know what you thought of what I've just said here. If you read the book, um, what did you make of it? Uh, did you enjoy it? And is this the kind of comic book that uh, you like? Is this the, the kind of comic book that you think needs to be um, duplicated by um, a younger comic book writers? Because I really do believe that this is the kind of book that can save an industry. If people just look at this, uh, this is the, the kind of thing that young boys want to, to read. This is about uh, uh, brave men and warriors, about nations defending themselves against invaders. That will certainly resonate uh, today in Europe, uh, that's for sure. Uh, there's no girly cucking about it, it's, uh, there's no me tooing about it, there's no agenda about it, there's uh, just historical information about there that you can obviously uh, look at uh, for yourself online. And uh, you've got a, a mummy from Hammer Horror at the, at the end of the book. But ask could you ask for? This is awesome. This is a common book written by a man for men. And that's exactly what I what I want for my comic books. So there we go. End the review there. Thanks for checking it out. Please like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. I'll be off and I'll check you all out later. See you guys.